welcome to this special edition of Studio Four. We're calling it We Are Amarillo. On today's show, we're exploring all the things that make Amarillo great for both the people that live here and for the thousands of people who visit here each and every year. Amarillo is proud to tout that its ranches and feedlots produce 25% of the nation's and 88% of Texas's beef. But it's also home to some of the finest art galleries and excellent eateries in the state. Today we look at those things that make the city great, starting with one of the most famous landmarks, a big steak. Let's be honest, there's a pretty large radius around Amarillo where if you drive down the highway, you're going to realize there's a sizable steak available in town. And if you're good, you can get it for free. Well, the original Big Texan used to host a lot of the cowboys that worked in the stockyards. In fact, my dad, being the Yankee he was, he put a big 12 top in the middle of the dining room, and whenever the cowboys would come in, he would let them sit there because he was discovering, too, about the Western mystique, the Texas mystique about what made Texas. And it was so funny because these cowboys would come in and try to outdo each other. He would cash their paychecks and sell them 25 cent beer. So by the end of the night, they were doing some antics that the tourists just loved sitting and watching. And one day he decided that next week all of them are going to put the five dollars into a cowboy hat and he was going to serve one pound steaks over a one hour period and whoever ate the most one pound steaks would get the money in the hat. And one cowboy ate four and one half one pound steaks which is 72 ounces. And to show off on top of that to his friends he also ate a baked potato, a shrimp cocktail, a roll and some butter. And my dad said from this day forward anybody that can eat this dinner which is four and a half one pound steaks, 72 ounces gets it for free, and that was in 1962. And the rest, as they say, is history. Since that famed evening in 1962, 100,000 people have tried. More than 10,000 have eaten the $72 steak for free. We want people to win. You know, everybody thinks, oh, you want to beat them at a steak. That steak comp probably cost us, what, $21, $22? Cheap, nothing. But, but if they eat that thing, and we're lenient on it, if they're eating on it, I mean, if they've got this much to go, well, that looks like this, so you did a good job. You know, you're a winner. They're going to go out and tell the world, you know, I ate the 72 ounce steak. You know, if they lose, they're not going to be as uh, upfront about what they did or they didn't do. And the Brothers Lee mean the world. 18% of the business at the Big Texan comes from international customers, credited mostly to the incredible exposure on the Travel Channel. European and Asian tourists are experiencing this cultural phenomenon for the first time. Uh, there seems to be more and more interest in the Big Texan, which is, you know, a compliment. Sure, the food is great and the atmosphere is legendary, but perhaps the most important part to the success comes because of the two brothers, who admittedly don't always see eye to eye on things. I, I'm the kite string and he's the kite. <laughs> I remain grounded and Bob just trying to hang on and, and see what kind of, uh, what, what he comes up with. It's just amazing. No, it's, it's easy. I mean, my job is to keep us on the front page. His job is to keep us off the obituaries. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it works, works that well that way. The Big Texan got its start on Route 66 in 1960. R.J. Bob Lee, Bobby and Danny's father, moved to Amarillo from the north. He was a Yankee. He knew nothing about being a cowboy. But he did know how to make something work. In 1970, when I-40 opened and business left Route 66, the big Texan moved to its current location. And we both grew up in the business and swore we'd never be in the restaurant business. Didn't okay. want to be. Did everything we could to get out of it. And he does mean everything. From stints in the electronics business to time spent on the pro wrestling arena, it seems like these two were destined to follow in their father's legacy. You have to keep on reinventing yourself, pushing that reset button, getting up every day and saying, what else, what other rock haven't we tried turning over yet? And Bob will come running in one day and he goes, I got the best idea. I know what, this is going to make us a million bucks. And I'm like, uh-oh. Some of Bobby's bright ideas this year, a 15,000 gallon brewery and newly expanded beer garden and a brand new gift shop. One of the questionable ones? Dinosaur in the parking lot. We, we had to put the gloves on for that one and go out back and we we discussed it for a while and, and uh, I lost. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Why, why did you want it though? What was that about? We didn't have one. We didn't have one. Yeah, we didn't. 
Oh, it's 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 twenty thousand dollars fun. <laughs> he calls it the dinosaur. <laughs> Random, maybe. Effective? The guys think so. As proud of Amarillo as we are, we would love for it to be a destination. Make sure the people are aware of what what else is there to do around here, all the different attractions that we have. Because we want Amarillo to be a you know more than an overnight stay just to pass through. We want it to be, you know, one or two des destination. Two brothers on a never-ending pursuit to give Amarillo tourists and locals alike their version of the authentic Texas experience. Oh, ever gonna retire? That's a great question. I mean, really good. That's a scary question. Yeah. I, mean, I thought retire, you do that when you when you have a job. Yeah. We want to get hired anywhere else. The Big Texan actually sells 110 tons of beef every year. That's a huge number. Eric Miller, our good friend from the Convention and Visitors Bureau, joins us now with an even more extraordinary number, right? I, I do have a great number for you. I mean, Amarillo is a beef town, and there's none bigger than the big 72-ounce steak at the Big Texan. So here's the question. Okay. Who is more successful eating the steak, men or women? I mean, my initial thought is probably men, right? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm, it's up to you to decide. Uh, okay, I'm going to go with men. <laughs> with men? Yeah. You're wrong. Of course I am. I'm frequently wrong. <laughs> and here's wrong. the amazing thing. One in seven men are successful. One out of two women really? are successful eating the big steak. That's pretty remarkable. That's, that's some good stuff. That's very remarkable. <laughs> okay, you've got some more interesting factoids for us throughout the show. You stick around for us? I am looking forward to All it. All right, very good. Okay, coming up next, it's a big reason Amarillo visitors come to the city to get their kicks on Route 66.